שמש צעקה Boaz said to, the, to his young man, it's an interesting expression that is used here for this lad, this boy, this servant. It is actually, if we look at the um, term, Hebrew term na'ar, it is a, somebody who, who doesn't have a fixed position, who's not burdened with responsibility. But then it goes on, Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers. And this, that he was in charge of the day laborers, the reapers who, who reaped the, the, the field there, is emphasized twice in these two verses five and six. And in a text that is so concise, so short, this is striking. It, it actually it is something that, that uh, looks for attention. That on the one hand, he is a, a young man, a youth, without burden, without responsibilities. On the other hand, he has a lot of responsibility. He has to supervise the workers. He has to provide for them. And in the evening, if they are day laborers, he will have to pay them. But then... There's a tension in this, in this verse. Then again, he has his responsibility, but he doesn't have a name. And in the book scroll of Ruth, where names are so important, this is something that jumps up. Actually, if you go back to this term, Na'ar, young man, lad, he could have been called Evid servant again or slave but if Eliezer for example is called the or calls himself the Evid of Abraham the servant of Abraham this is a title of honor if we think about the kings not just in Israel also in Egypt the Pharaoh for example they had Avadim they had these servants but they were the great ones they were his advisors that they were his staff so quite honored people. The fact that Boaz's foreman is called a na'ar, a young lad, is very, very striking. And then it goes on that Boaz asks him, uh, to whom does this young woman, this na'ara, belong? And uh, in a similar way, in the Bible, other people ask for, well, who is this slave? Or Joseph is called a na'ar ivri, a, a lad, a, a Hebrew lad, a Hebrew young man. What we want to keep here, what we want to take hold of, is that Boaz's question, that has all these kind of connotations with it, what it does in the end is it makes out of Ruth, who was a na'ara, an unknown lady who is not worthy of any attention, he, he, he transforms her into a personality that is significant, into a personality we should pay attention to. So the young man was in charge of the reapers answered she's a young moabite woman who returned with naomi from the field of moab this lad this young man who has responsibility he actually now emphasizes ruth's moabite status and her association with naomi both things if we keep in mind what we have learned are not very positive that she is a moabite young lady on her own but then no she came with Naomi 
who was the wife or is the widow of Elimelech, who fled his responsibility, and, and then um, all these tragedies surrounding these two women developed. So this is the atmosphere that comes with it. And then this young man says to Boaz, she said, I would like to glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. Ruth obviously knew something about Hebrew tradition and, she, and Boaz didn't object to it. He more or less took it for granted that the migrants would come and, and gather after the reapers. Now still Ruth asked for permission, even though she could have said, oh, it's my right. At least the Torah tells us or tells the Israelite, when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, don't go back to get it. It shall be for the migrant, the fatherless and the widow. And the same thing is true with the olive tree. If you forget something, don't go back and take it. The same thing in the vineyard. It says that you shall not strip it afterward. It shall be for the migrant, the fatherless, and the widow. You shall remember, the Torah says, that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this. So, to Boaz and his foreman, Ruth's story was quite known. And still, Boaz and Ruth here meet for the first time. And this young foreman of Boaz closes his description of Ruth with the sentence, so she came and stayed from early morning until now, and she has rested very little, like you should rest in a house. So she was always diligent, always working. And this points something to Ruth's character, that she did not forget herself in self-pity because of the hard work, but she took the initiative into her hands and worked hard. <laughs>